Oh yeah. What's happening, everybody? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. And we're going to do a little bit something different this, this time. Um, we're going to do an, uh, a walkthrough of a new device that the good folks at Centrance sent over to me. This, uh, they sent me over this product thinking that maybe it would be applicable for the folks who watch my channel. And actually, after having used it, I think that they might be right. The device that we're going to give a walkthrough of is the Centrance Mixer Face R4. What is it, Mike? Well, it's an interface and a little bit of a mixer, but it's also a portable device. So uh, it has its own battery. So if you're uh, out and you're recording and you want to record into your camera, it'll work in that case. If you want to record using your phone as your DAW, it'll work in that case. If you want to use it as your home interface plugged into your computer the way I have it right now, it'll work in that case. Lots of different use cases for it. And there are actually a couple of different models. And I'll sort of give you the, the, the whys and wherefores of each of, the, each of the different models. We'll walk through the features of the device. And I'll give you my impressions and tell you some of the places where I'm impressed by it and some of the places where I think it could be improved. And maybe you'll think it will be helpful. So let's start right up front. Let's give a walkthrough of the different elements that are present in this device. Right at the top, there are two XLR jacks right here at the top. So they are, they're the combo jacks. So you can put in XLR or you can put a quarter inch or one of each. So you have an XLR microphone and your say electric guitar, you could put one into each channel. So it's a two channel input. On the front is really the business end of this. I call it the front, maybe it's the top, I, I don't know. But in the front, the one with all the knobs, we're gonna call that the front. Here's the primary interface of the interface at the top you see you've got uh or on the front you've got six knobs the top knobs on each side are labeled gain and that is the input gain of whatever device you have plugged in so in this case i'm using a sure sm7b microphone and so that's a very gain hungry microphone so i have the gain turned all the way up and I actually chose this microphone for this specific reason. Uh, this is a very gain hungry microphone. It requires that preamp to be turned all the way up. And that's really what can reveal any deficiencies in the preamplifier itself. And what we can hear if we listen. Turned all the way up. These preamps are silent. And I didn't expect that. Once I heard that, I was really pleasantly surprised. These preamps supply about 55 dB of gain, which is a little bit low for the SM7B. I'm getting a pretty good, pretty good signal on it. You may consider upgrading it if you're going to use something like a 7B to use a, uh, a FET head or a cloud lifter to get that little bit of extra gain that this would really benefit from. But it does have enough gain to get a nice good signal out of a 7B. So if you're using this out in the field, if you're using this on a, in a podcast situation. So here's one of the, the situations where I think this could be, could be useful. If you're a podcaster, maybe you do interview podcasts where you bring the podcast to the interviewer rather than the interviewer to your studio to do a podcast. Maybe you're going to set up in somebody's kitchen at somebody's workplace. You're going to try and get, um, uh, you're going to try and get the interview at the location then this device is really helpful. If you're going to use this in, in concert with a camera, maybe you're doing a, an interview that's filmed and you'd like to be able to get the, uh, get the audio directly into the camera, but also into your interface at the same time, maybe into a DAW on your phone, you can do this because this is battery operated. Pretty cool. So that's the gain up at the top. I gave it the hardest microphone I could think of and it performs admirably. And really the distinguishing factor is that preamp is turned all the way up and it is just dead quiet. Take a listen. That's pretty cool. Okay, below that you have 
another knob that's uh, the same for both channels. And that is uh, the channel, uh, sort of what you're hearing in the microphone versus the USB. So sometimes when you're listening back, you want to be able to mix between what you're hearing in the microphone, the live monitoring, zero latency from the microphone, and what's coming back from the computer. So if you're playing along to music in voiceover world, if you're going to do a pickup or you're going to punch something in and you want to try and match up exactly to that spot, you can actually adjust how much of each signal you're hearing, how much is coming back from the computer versus how much is coming back from your microphone into your ears. And so there's a mixer, so you can switch it from mostly the microphone to mostly the USB, what's coming back from the computer. And you actually won't hear your microphone in your ears, or you can go anywhere in between. That's actually really, really helpful, especially if you're gonna try and do a play along or you're gonna try and do a punch in in the voiceover world. Below that are two more knobs. And these are a little bit different depending on which side. On the far side is one that says monitor. And that's how loud it is in your headphones. And you notice I have it turned all the way up. Under normal circumstances, not something I'd recommend. But the uh, the headphone amplifier in this, it says in the documentation, is really meant for headphones that are low impedance. So 25, 50, uh, 50 ohm impedance headphones. I'm test driving these uh, Bayer Dynamic DT880s, and these are 250 ohms. Lovely headphones. But uh, this high impedance uh, really makes it so that these these headphones don't actually go all, all of that loud in this particular case. And it's been a, a little bit of an education um, learning about those different impedances and showing how much it's a, how much it differs in your headphones. You can't hear it. Wouldn't make a difference for you. Uh, but what headphones you choose really can have an impact on how loud it is uh, when you're listening back. The last knob is this AUX 3-4 mixer. And what that is, is on the bottom of the device, and we'll, we'll look at that in a second, there are a number, uh, there's another input so that you can add an, uh, an external source to hear it in your ears. I'll flip the device up so that you can look at it. And I'll unplug my headphones so they're not in the way. So going across the bottom here, we have the three lights and that indicates how much battery there is it's really just what it is it's a battery indicator three means it's your at a mostly or full battery while we're in the back here there's a couple of other things i want to just point out uh, as you would expect on an interface if you wanted to drive a condenser microphone you'll need phantom power and this device does supply phantom power via this switch that again is needed with the toothpick you would you'd slide it back and forth right there, sort of a set and forget. Um, I wish that was a little bit more of a user um, operable switch that you didn't need a special tool like a paper clip or a, or a toothpick to switch that because people do switch back and forth between dynamic and condenser microphones. It's not a one time only thing, at least, I, at least not for me in my particular use case. So, but you can switch back and forth between um, no phantom power and phantom power. Now I will say it energizes both XLR ports with phantom power. So you have to make sure that both of your devices, if you're using an XLR, that they're not going to be, not going to be damaged by phantom power if it's applied, but it's not, uh, but that device doesn't need it. Next to it, you'll see there are three eighth inch jacks and one of them is currently in use. There is a line in, so if you need to plug in an, a, a, an outside source, such as an, an MP3 player, in this case, I've got my phone plugged in so we can listen to how the uh, how it works. And then there's a line out. So if you wanted to not only have this go to a computer, but you also wanted to take this to uh, a camera, you can have uh, the line out go to the camera. And below it, there is a switch, which is why I have my toothpick here. There are switches that are it says in the manual to use something like a paper clip or a toothpick that you can adjust really these sort of set and forget switches where you can switch the output of that line out to either low or high. So depending on how your camera, if that's what you're using, uh, it, how your camera wants that, that signal, whether it wants a nice hot signal or it wants a low signal, you can adjust the output. Very handy. I've seen line outs on, on many devices. I haven't seen it with an, an adjust, uh, adjustment like that. That's pretty cool. So there's the, uh, there is the line out eighth inch jack, and then there's the, the adjustment for it. 
And finally, there's a headphone jack. That's where you plug in your headphones. And below that, just to round it out, there's the power button. So that's the bottom of the device. Now, I'm going to switch back to the front and we're going to talk about that aux for a second. So if you are using an outside music source or you're, you've got an outside source that, that you want to include, you plug that into the AUX 3.4 and you can then hit play. Now, this music, in order to avoid a copyright strike, I just went to the YouTube audio library and I downloaded the first song. We have, we're going to listen to Dark, Dark Tranquility. Here we go. Dark Tranquility. But the idea is if you're doing something like busking or you're playing in a coffee house or something like that you can have your iPad or your outside source and you can have that come in and you can hear it in your headphones now my experience in using the device is that no matter what well first we'll talk about mixing it so you can mix it so the music is really loud by switching it to heavily in favor of the aux or you can have it come all the way down so that you don't hear it at all. But that is getting printed onto the track along with the uh, along with the music. So not really sure exactly what the use case is for it for that, except in a live video. They say play along to a click, but you don't want the click in your uh, in your music. So there you have it. The last couple of interfaces uh, points across the top is you have this high Z an HPF switch. The high Z is if you are using um, an, like an electric guitar or something like that, and you need it to be set to a high Z, you can just put a toothpick in there and switch that over to switch between a uh, high Z or not high Z. And finally is a high pass filter. So you'll sometimes hear this as a bass roll off or a low cut. Uh, and that is really good, good for taking away rumble. If you need to take some of the bass out, uh, very common, you see it on microphones fairly commonly, but you have it also here on this device. And that is a 130 Hertz and below. It rolls off at six, uh, six decibels per octave. And it will do that for both the first channel and the second channel. That's pretty cool. On the bottom, you'll see that this is attached to just a tripod I got from Amazon. So you could mount it into like a hot shoe with an adapter. You could put it on a tripod. It does have the same uh, threading that most camera devices uh, use. So if you are using it for videography, it will match up with much of your equipment. Okay, so let's talk about the different models that they offer. There are actually three different models of Mixer Face R4s. And it, they, they just get progressively more featureful in a very interesting way. So the very basic one, the one that I've been showing here, is just the R4. And that essentially is a mixer and an interface. If you go one step up from that, oh, and that initially is $350 is what they have on the website right now. $350 for the, the basic entry level. The step up for that is they add a micro SD slot and the ability to record. So you can record directly to the device itself in addition to it being uh, uh, something that you can export, uh, connect to the computer. So you can have a, what they call a safety copy or you could just use it as a standalone recorder with an external microphone. And so it's got the, the built-in micro SD recorder. The step up from that is one that has an XY microphone built into the front. So you can actually use it for... Uh, sound gathering itself. It's got microphones, stereo microphones built into it, uh, in addition to it being a recorder. And that adds another 50 bucks, so it brings it to a total of 500. So the top of the line with the recorder, with the XY microphone, and the interface mixer, all that is about 500 bucks. Now, if you've watched my channel, and this is just full disclosure here, if you've watched my channel, you know that I uh, really do like the Zoom H5. And when I first got this device, the R4, I was like, well, it doesn't, it's not going to beat out my Zoom, H, uh, my H5. And at first I was like, oh, I'm not, I don't know that I'm going to be swayed from that. And actually, I, I have been somewhat swayed by that. And the reason, I'll tell you why. So the Zoom H5 right here um, is very similar to the top of the line of the, uh, the Mixerface RM4 line. So it has built into it. Let me unscrew it from the little tripod here. It has built into it. It can be, has XY microphones. It's got the ability to be an SD recorder. It's got two interface, uh, two inputs for, uh, for um, 
and it can also be an interface and it has AA batteries. Got everything that I really like. And this has been my travel device. I bring a microphone whenever I travel. I bring a microphone and I and I travel with this as my, my portable gig for uh, my portable rig for auditions and so forth. Where the big difference is, and I think where the where the money is well spent on the R4 is the difference in the preamps. The preamps on the Zoom, they are consumer grade. When, especially if you're working with a dynamic microphone, these preamps, when at least on mine, if you get above halfway up on the dial, you hear underlying hiss. They are noisy. And here's what I mean by that. So right now we've, I've switched over to my Zoom H5 and you can see I've got that one plugged in, exact same microphone. Everything else is exactly the same. The preamps, I mean, it sounds pretty good. It's got plenty of gain for the Shure SM7B. But if I turn this one up, if you turn, if you listen to the preamp, there's just no comparison underlying noise-wise. I'll turn up the preamp just all the way up so you can see how it compares to the R4's preamps. Listen to this. There's so much underlying noise, it actually shows up on the meter. That underlying noise is problematic for the, for the H5, especially with a dynamic microphone. And so you do end up really needing to have something like the, uh, the, um, the FET head or something similar so that you can get rid of this so you can keep your preamps down low enough in order to make that work now if you only have one yeah could you do it with the 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 h5 and a fed head and a dynamic microphone you could and save yourself probably a i don't know small amount of money is it worth it that's really for you to decide on how how you'd want to do it but i did want you to hear sort of how the how this compares to the R4. So I definitely think that this has a spot. The R4 definitely has a spot. It's, you'd have to decide if the preamps are enough to, to offset it from your H5, if you were trying to, to decide, because the H5 with the XY microphone um, is about 279. It is expandable. So you can do something like turn it from a two channel. You just pop on an extra attachment and now it's got one, two, three, four XLRs. Um, so there is something to be said for this. It's just that uh, the, the preamplifiers in general are going to be noisier. In order to offset that, you'd need some, you definitely need to use something like a FET head for dynamic microphones to get that additional gain. And all of a sudden, if you're doing that, this device becomes essentially the same price as the R4. So something, something to decide something to decide. Well, so there you go. There's the the, the Sentrance uh, R, uh, Mixer Face R4. Really a, a, a great big thank you to the folks over at Sentrance for sending it over to me. I'm really grateful for it. Um, I really enjoyed using it. Um, I hope it's been informative for the people that are interested in, uh, in, in, such, a devoid, in, in such a device. Uh, I really do think it, it merits. The, the quality of the preamps really do make it for me uh, a device worth considering, especially if you're going to be doing a combination of working from a home studio and working from a remote studio or attaching this to a camera. The preamps really are, really are quite amazing. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. And now go get yourself a device. Maybe it's a battery operated portable interface, but get yourself a recording rig and a microphone. Get out there and record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time.